I'm now going to tell you about two different ways of scaling the axis in graphs, linear scaling versus logarithmic scaling. So let me start by defining what linear scale versus logarithmic axis scale means, and then I will tell you about some of the advantages and disadvantages of these two ways of scaling plots. So here we have a plot with linear y-axis scaling. Now it's not going to be any data because for this slide the data don't actually matter. What does matter, what I want you to pay attention to, is the fact that the spacing on the y-axis ticks are done by addition. So we start at 0 and then we say 0 plus 10 is 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. So we are creating, or the spacing between each of these ticks on the y-axis is given by the addition operation. Now let's think about logarithmic y-axis scaling. So now we have a similar plot, except the ticks are no longer defined by addition. We don't get them by summing the same number. Instead, we get them by multiplying by the same number. Now in this case, I'm multiplying by 10, so we start off at 1, times 10 is 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, we end up with 10,000. So this plot is growing really, really fast. That also means that in linear terms, the spacing between each successive tick mark is not the same. These two are 9 units apart, these two are 90 units apart, 900 units apart, and so on. So this is logarithmic y-axis scaling, the spacing between the ticks is given by multiplication, not by addition with linear scaling. Now here I'm showing the multiplication by a factor of 10. That is the most common way of showing logarithmic scales. So by uh, incrementing by a factor of 10, multiplying by 10, but you're not limited to multiplying by 10. Sometimes multiplication by other numbers might make more sense. Sometimes you see uh, two, so this could be two, four, eight, 16, 32. Sometimes a base of eight makes sense, so it would be eight and 64 and so on. But most of the time it's going to be powers of 10. And because these are growing powers of 10, and also just for visual aesthetic reasons, these numbers start to get really long. They start to take up a lot of real estate horizontally on the graph here. So it's also common in log scaling. So here I'm just using a different term, logarithmic y-axis scaling, log scaling. It's common to use scientific notation here. So this would be 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Again, the, the principle is the same. We are spacing by multiplication instead of spacing by addition. Now here I'm only describing logarithmic versus linear scaling for the y-axis. This is called a log scaled plot. You can also scale the x-axis logarithmically or linearly. So if the x-axis is linearly scaled and the y-axis is logarithmically scaled, we just call that a log scaled plot or a logarithmic y-axis scaled plot. If you have logarithmic spacing, uh, so multiplication-based spacing on both axes, so log on the x and log on the y, then we would call this a log-log plot. So you repeat the word log twice because it's log on x and log on y. Okay, so I'm sure you are super curious about how data look, the same data, in a linear scale versus a logarithmic scale. Well, lucky for you, I have read your mind and I made a slide showing that. So here we have two functions, x equals x, so this is just a linear scale. Might not look like it's increasing linearly, but that's because the x-axis only goes up to 10 here, which unfortunately I'm not showing you for some reason, but this goes up to x equals 10, so in fact the linear scale goes up to here, y, uh, y equals 10. And here we have uh, at y equals e to the x, I see there's a typo here, this should say uh, y equals x and y equals e to the x. So this is the y-axis. Apologies for that little typo here. So here we have the function uh, e to the x. And you've already seen this function before. It grows uh, exponentially. It grows really, really fast as we get to larger numbers. In fact, it's even off the charts. It's past 100 by the time we get to like e to the 4 or 5 or wherever this is here. 
Okay, so this is a linear y-axis. Now what I'm going to show you is exactly these same two functions, but plotted on a logarithmically scaled y-axis. And it looks totally different. Same data looks really different. Here, this what is actually a linear function, this is actually just a, a line, y equals x. But it looks like, well, it, it looks like a logarithm. It looks like the log of x here. But you have to be really mindful of this because this is not actually the log of x. This is y equals x. This is a perfect linear function, but it's plotted on a logarithmic scale. Conversely, e to the x is just a straight line. And this is a straight line because remember I explained before when I introduced natural logarithm and uh, natural exponential that these two functions are inverses of each other. So if we have logarithmic scaling for, a, uh, for an exponential, then we just end up with a straight line. Okay, so the same data can look quite different on a linear scale versus a logarithmic scale. So what are the pros and cons of linear versus logarithmic scaling? Well, that's listed here in this table. Linear scaling over here, logarithmic scaling over here. Linear scaling is generally easier to interpret, and that's really just because most of the plots that you see in your life are linearly scaled or have linear scaling y-axes. So it, they're just a little bit easier to interpret. Logarithmic scaling might need a little bit more explanation or unpacking, particularly if you are showing the, the data, showing the logarithmically scaled axes to a general audience. By general audience, I mean people who are not necessarily used to uh, looking at logarithmic scales. Maybe people who don't have some formal training in some, uh, some aspect of science, some area of science where logarithmic scales are common. So linear scaling is also easily scaled to big numbers or small numbers or negative numbers. Logarithmic scaling, depending on how you set things up, they often don't even work with negative numbers, or you might need to translate the data. You might need to apply some kind of a transformation to the data in order to work with a negative y-axis. So linear scaling can obscure trends or comparisons across variables. That's really just the case if those variables grow very fast or if they grow to be very small. Logarithmic scaling tends to be most appropriate for uh, physics and biology, finance or growth, or not necessarily really big numbers per se, but when you have really big differences between numbers. So when you have functions or data that really span multiple different orders of magnitude, they really span a lot of different scales, then logarithmic scaling tends to be more appropriate than linear scaling. My personal recommendation is that you should try to use linear scaling whenever possible. That's mainly for, for, for this reason. Linear scaling is what everyone is used to seeing, so they tend to be easier to interpret. So I would say use linear scaling unless you have a good reason to use log plots. And so therefore you should use logarithmically scaled plots only when it's really the appropriate thing. And don't just use it because you think it's cool and it makes your graphs look harder to interpret and therefore you think it might make you look smarter. So there you go, linear versus logarithmic axis scaling. The key difference is that with linear scaling, the tick marks are defined by addition. And with logarithmic scaling, the tick marks are defined by multiplication. In general, it's better to use linear plots because they're easier to read, and logarithmic plots should be used when it's most appropriate for that particular type of data.